Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. Well, there's been a lot of news with AMD and Threadripper and the new Ryzen 3 series, and of course, Vega. Now, I've been wanting to touch on these subjects for the last few days, but unfortunately, I've been a little bit busy. So some of this news may be old to some of you, but of course, I will throw in some of the new news that is trending today. Now, I want to start off with Ryzen 3. Now, they announced Ryzen 3 last week. Now, this is going to be a budget line CPU. Now, these are going to basically go against the low and i5s more or less the i3s and the Intel Pentium chips now these CPUs are very disruptive and they are priced quite cheap now you have the 1300 X just costing a hundred and twenty nine US dollars while the Ryzen 1200 will cost just a hundred and nine dollars now the 1300 X will have four cores four threads with a boost clock of 3.7 and a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz the Ryzen 3 1200 also has four cores and four threads with a base clock of 3.1 gigahertz and a boost clock of 3.4 gigahertz now this price is very cheap so there's no excuse if you want to go out there and build yourself an AMD rig um, they have made it quite affordable $129 for a four core four thread CPU is excellent which is a great alternative to the Intel i3 and of course their Pentium line now let's talk AMD's Threadripper now Threadripper is also going to be very disruptive to Intel. Now these are going to be going against the i9, the X core line and the 920X which is just a $799 CPU. It offers a 12 core 24 thread with a base clock of 3.5 and a boost clock of 4.0 gigahertz. It absolutely thrashes Intel. Now it thrashes all but their top of the line CPU, but their top of the line CPU will set you back a couple thousand dollars. Now to be fair, Intel does have a core i9-7980XE and it does have more cores than Threadripper. Now it has 18 cores compared to the 1950X's 16 cores and it has 36 threads compared to Threadripper's 32 threads. Now they're both built on 14 nanometer technology, but Threadripper has 64 PCIe lanes available compared to the 44 that Intel makes available on their platform. Also, Threadripper has more L3 cache. It has 32 megabytes compared to the 24.75 megabytes on the Intel processor. Now, to be honest with you, Threadripper is amazing. It's a great value for your money. Now, the Intel Core i9-7980XE is priced at $2,000 compared to the $1,000 of the 1950X Threadripper chip. Now, do you want 18 cores for $8,000 more? I don't think it's worth it and I really think AMD hit it out the park here with their price to performance. Now Intel is in quite a predicament and they have put out a bunch of nasty slides. Now I have to say that Threadripper is very disruptive and there have been some reports coming out today that the 1950X will actually ship with water cooling. Now if this is true who knows how high the clocks will get or probably will get a very stable 4.1 gigahertz which will put it closer to the 18 core i9 chip. AMD is really hitting it out the park here and the evidence is in Intel's saltiness lately. Now they had a presentation to their investors and they put up all these slides. Now I'm going to run some of these slides on the screen here. Now if you can see they put their Intel Xeon uh, processor which is a $2,000 processor. I believe it's over $2,000 versus the AMD Ryzen 7 1800X and they downclocked it too. Now this is unbelievable that they would actually put something up like this and think that they would actually get away with it. Now they also put some other slides up here. They, they said AMD Ryzen CPU game performance inhibited by lack of optimization. Now they're talking about some of the launch issues that um, Ryzen had and Intel when they launched their i5s or their i7s they had a few optimizations problems as well and of course patches were sent out to alleviate this now since Ryzen has been released they've released two um, patches for the BIOSes, and a lot of people are getting their RAMs running up at 3200 now and also it's been reported that the latest driver which was uh, yesterday I believe it's 1.006 a for the BIOSes, it has increased gaming performance by 5% so Ryzen optimizations are still happening now with the Threadripper line the issues that were there with Ryzen 7 
are not present. For gaming, it just blows Intel away. Now they can't even use that excuse with Threadripper. Threadripper is not only priced lower than what Intel has to offer, it is giving a better performance apart from their top of the line CPU which is over $2,000 and only offers two more cores. Now what would you do? Are you gonna save over a thousand dollars and get a Ryzen CPU? Intel is in quite a bind and they know this. They underestimated what AMD was gonna do with the Ryzen CPUs and they've even gone so far to say that the Ryzen CPU are glued together. Now this is so false. Of course they use the Infinity Fabric which allows them to add on and scale up and you don't lose latency like Intel would like you to believe. Now it also goes further as the epic line which are server cpus and they as well are trashing intel now intel is in a very tough situation and i have to say I i'm all up for competition intel has been resting on their laurels for years they've been overcharging us because they've been the only game in town now i do have some rigs that do have intel processors in them and i'm not going to say that their processors are bad they make a really good processor it's just that they're overpriced now when you see amd coming out with prices that are like 50 50% lower than what Intel has to offer, you know for a fact that Intel has been gouging its customers. Now I want to move on to some Vega news. Now not too long ago I did report on Vega and I said that Vega would be launching with three different GPUs. Now some other publications have confirmed this information from their insiders. Now they said there will be a lower end Vega which will be the XL, it will be sporting 3584 GCN cores and there will also be an RX Vega XT and an RX Vega XTX. Now each of them will have 4096 GCN cores and the only difference is that one is going to be air cooled and the other will be liquid cooled. Now some other YouTubers out there did some benchmarks on the Frontier Edition. Now we know that this is not a gaming card however we can get a general idea of how Vega will perform. Now they tried the game mode on this card and it did absolutely nothing which tells me that a lot of drivers are are not in place. Now I think we're going to get increased performance in the Vega GPUs that are dedicated for gamers. I think some drivers will come out to improve the performance and of course there's been some leaked benchmarks that put it around the GTX 1080 levels. Now I hope that it will be beating the GTX 1080. I hope it's somewhere in between the 1080 Ti and the 1080. Now the prices I'm quite sure are going to be much lower than the competition, but they need to deliver on their performance. Now Gamer Nexus did a teardown on the card and he actually implemented some water cooling and he got a 15-20% to 20 improvement in performance. Now I think when these cards release to the public, I think AMD would have tweaked it a little bit, especially the top of the line water cooled card, so I think we will be getting an improvement in performance. Personally I think it's going to be under the GTX 1080 Ti and above the GTX 1080. I hope they surprise us with performance really close to a GTX 1080 Ti. I am really impressed with what AMD is doing here. Now I think that the Vega line, I'm quite hopeful that it will deliver as we have been waiting it for quite a long time and I think they just took their time to really optimize this. Now we also got some news today that Samsung will be increasing its production of HBM2 memory to keep up with the demand of the GPUs. Now I think Vega is going to be a hit. Now Apple has signed on and the Vega GPUs will be in the Apple computers. Now the fact that Samsung will be increasing production on HBM2, it might make Vega affordable. Now a lot of people are pegging Vega to be expensive because of HBM2 and because it's very hard to produce. Now the fact that Samsung will be increasing production should help with the prices of Vega. Now I'm really excited what AMD is doing here. I think it's phenomenal what they're doing with the CPU market. I think it's phenomenal that Threadripper is thrashing Intel because nobody's really been able to beat Intel. Intel has been the only show in town for the longest time and AMD has just been a spectator. Now they are in the game. They are competing with them in the server markets, they're competing with them in the high-end desktop market and of course they're competing with them in the gaming sector. I personally will be getting a Ryzen 3 rig and I will be putting it together on the channel. I have two RX 480s that I have crossfired in my Ryzen 7 rig right now and I'm going to be taking those out and putting them into the Ryzen 3 rig and of course I will be updating my rig with Vega. So stay tuned for those videos. Anyways, I really want to know what you guys think about this. Are any of you out there going to build a Ryzen 3 rig? And how many of you out there are going to get Vega? And what do you guys think about Thread Ripper? Leave your comments down below. I ask you guys to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one.